وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. The brothers in Islam, all praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise him, we seek his help, we ask for the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We seek refuge and protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil of our own selves and the evil of our own actions. I'd like to begin by greeting all of you with the greeting of the people of Ahl al Jannah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward each and every one of you, dear brothers in Islam, for indeed you have gathered in one of the greatest and most beloved places to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the face of this earth, and that is Masajidullah, one of the houses of the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, they are the most beloved places to Allah azza wa jalla on the face of this earth. And may this be in your scale of good deeds, Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Fajazakum Allah khayr al-jazaa'. The brothers in Islam, uh, as we begin tonight's lesson, no doubt we are approaching Ramadan. We are at the doors of this great month. For as a reminder, inshaAllah ta'ala, yani to myself first and foremost, and to my dear respected brothers, uh, and I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive me this opportunity to sit in front of my brothers again, and to try and benefit them with some ilm. Before we begin, however, I'd like to correct the statement made in the beginning when yani, the brother introduced me. For may we all be scholars, inshallah ta'ala, but I am and do not consider myself at all to be a scholar. For inshallah, a student of knowledge, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from all of us. Akhwani fillah, yaqulu rabbu azza wa jal fi surat al-Baqarah, alif la. ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين الله سبحانه وتعالى يتوزع في سورة البقرة ألف لام مين ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه This is the Quran the book of Allah عز وجل there can be no doubt in it لا ريب فيه The brothers in Islam as we begin tonight's lesson this is something that we need to remind ourselves whenever we hear the Quran whenever we read the book of Allah سبحانه وتعالى this is a principle that we need to remind ourselves over and over again. That the Qur'an is the truth. The words of Allah Azza wa Jal, they are the reality, ikhwani fillah. There can be no doubt in the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remind yourselves of this great principle every time you read the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Hudan lil muttaqeen. This Qur'an is a guide or a guidance for those with taqwa, that beautiful quality of the people of Ahlul Jannah, at taqwa lil muttaqin, this quality which we want to achieve, dear brothers in Islam, in this coming month of Ramadan. Akhwani Fillah, from the guidance of the Quran, is, and from something which we see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us throughout the Quran, is that He loves when we mention and we remember His blessings upon us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He wants from us to remember and to recall and mention His ni'am, His blessings upon us. This is something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He loves. From the greatest of these ni'am, dear brothers in Islam, from these great ni'am that Allah has blessed you and me with, is the great month of the shahr of Ramadan. The great month of Ramadan, dear brothers in Islam. A month full of forgiveness and full of mercy from Allah Azza wa Jal. Qala Allah ta'ala, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Allah Azza wa Jal is addressing those with Iman. Oh you who have believed, oh you who have Iman, then fasting the month of Ramadan has been prescribed, has been made an obligation for you, just like it was made an obligation for those before you, dear brothers in Islam. Akhwani Fillah, something very interesting about this, this verse. Nowhere in the book of Allah Azza wa Jal do we find or do we read that Allah Azza wa Jal reminds us that an obligation He has made upon us, He has made it for the previous nations. 
We don't find, for example, in the book of Allah Azawajal, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that a salah, praying, was made an obligation for you just like it was made for those before you. Or hajj, or any other of the acts of, of obligation that were made obligatory upon us. We don't find this in the Qur'an, except this great act of as siyam Tonight you will see, Akhwani Fillah, the greatness of this act of worship. How special this act of worship, fasting, is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This, dear brothers in Islam, is due to the fact that fasting is no doubt, no one can argue is a great act of worship. And in fact, fasting, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He knows that in fasting there is difficulty. There is mashaqqa. There is a kind of hardship, dear brothers in Islam, in performing this act of worship, in fasting. And this is why you find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not mention the other actions when He mentioned that it was written for those before us. For indeed, in fasting, we learn or we can see that this act is between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When a person fasts, when he stays away from his food and drink and from his desires or from the other actions which break the fast from Al-Fajr to Al-Maghrib, then dear brothers in Islam, this is something, and this is very hard. It, is, it has some hardship. And therefore, this act is something of a secret. It's only between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one else can see your fast. No one else knows when a person is fasting. Therefore, this act is something which is between you and Allah azza wa jal. This act is an action which is full of ikhlas, full of sincerity. This is why it is loved by Allah azza wa jal. This action, dear brothers in Islam, it has all the different types of a sabr. Fasting, as siyam it contains the different types of as sabr For if we find in fasting, for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jalla, it has as sabr ala ta'a. Fasting, it has the type of patience which is being patient upon obeying Allah Azza wa Jalla. For indeed, the fasting person, he remains fasting. He remains in his act of worship and does not break his fast. Likewise, as siyam it has as sabr ala al-ma'siyah. Fasting, it has the kind of patience where a person stays away from sin. For we find in the hadith where Rasulullah said in authentic hadith, فَإِذَا كَانَ يَوْمُ صَوْمِ أَحَدِكُمْ فَلَا يَصْخَبْ فَلَا يَرْفُثْ وَلَا يَصْخَبْ If one of you is fasting, then let him not raise his voice and yell and shout and let him not huh, use words of obscenities or actions which break or nullify or reduce the reward of his fast. Therefore, the brothers in Islam, as sabr an al ma'siyah fasting for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jalla, it has this type of patience where you stay away from sin, and you stay away from food and drink, those actions which are made haram while the person is fasting. And likewise, we find in as siyam it has as sabr an aqdarillah, as sabr an aqdarillah upon the qadr of Allah Azza wa Jalla. This is the great act of fasting, the brothers in Islam, for the fasting person. No matter what he encounters in his day, from the Qadr of Allah Azza wa Jalla, he remains steadfast and he keeps his fast. He does not break his fast. Showing you, Ikhwani Fillah, not only the greatness of fasting in Ramadan, but giving us that kind of encouragement to fast, yani even after Ramadan. Even after the month of Ramadan, to keep up this act of worship. To do some yani fasting from an nawafil voluntary fasting. For wallahi, this action, as I said, is one which is beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we can go on and on, dear brothers in Islam. One such hadith which shows us the greatness of this act is where Rasulullah informed us in the hadith Qudsi. When he said, يَقُولُ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ كُلُّ عَمَلِ ابْنِ آدَمَ لَهُ إِلَّا الصِّيَامِ فَإِنَّهُ لِي وَأَنَا أَجْزِي بِهِ He said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, all the actions of the son of Adam are for himself. They are for him. Except as siyam For it is for me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us, it is for me. It is for him alone, dear brothers in Islam. Wa ana And Allah alone will reward the fasting person with this, with his reward, dear brothers in Islam. And this again, Ikhwani Fallah teaches something amazing. Shaykh Muhammad al-Salih al-Uthaymin rahmatullah alayhi. 
he mentioned something very amazing in his Sharh on this hadith. He said this shows us that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, فَإِنَّهُ لِي وَأَنَا أَجْزِي When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us that the fast is for him, this shows us that يَوْمَ Qiyamah, the day of judgment, the day when no doubt, dear brothers in Islam, the day when we will have to account for our deeds. And if a person, if any one of us has wronged someone on the day of judgment, then the rights will be given back to that person who was wronged. And on that day, dear brothers in Islam, it is not dollars and cents which are taken from the person who wronged the other. On that day, it is not favors that you can do for another person. Or it's not something you can ask for someone for forgiveness. But rather, Yawm Al-Qiyamah, on the day of judgment, if you have wronged someone, it is taken from your hasanat and given to the person that you have wronged. To the believer that you have wronged. It is taken from your good deeds. And if you have run out of good deeds, then his bad deeds are placed onto you according to how much you have wronged or oppressed that other person. Akhwani Fillah, when we say it is taken from your deeds, what we learn from this hadith is your deeds يعني, are exposed to be taken from or the reward to be taken from you on Qiyamah, except as siyam For indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, illa, illa sawm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has reserved fasting for you. He has reserved this action. Yawm al-Qiyamah, it cannot be touched. On the day of judgment, these deeds or this fasting cannot be taken from you. <coughs> and this is something amazing, something which encourages us and gives us that motivation to fast. As I said, not only in Ramadan, but remind yourselves of this virtue throughout the month of Ramadan. Remind yourselves of this virtue even after Ramadan so that you can continue to fast every Monday and Thursday if you wish. If you can't do that, Monday or Thursday or the white days or any other day that you are able to, dear brothers in Islam. For this, this is the act of fasting, Ikhwani Fillah. This is the great virtue, the act of fasting which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He loves. We find in the, in the very same surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, actually before we even go on, in this very same verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us, كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ In that you may achieve this quality of a taqwa This is the goal, no doubt, the brothers in Islam, as we have been reminded over and over again, that we want to achieve in, in fasting the month of Ramadan. This is the goal that we want to achieve, in that we want to achieve a taqwa We want to refine our khuluq. We want to raise our standard of character. We want to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the goal, as I said, from as siyam In the very same surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us, شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنُ هُدًا لِلنَّاسِ هُدًا لِلنَّاسِ وَبَيِّنَاتٍ مِّنَ الْهُدَى وَالْفُرْقَانِ فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَصُمْهُ The month of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, الَّذِي أو شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن. The brothers in Islam, Allah سبحانه وتعالى when describing Ramadan, he did not say شهر الذي فرض فيه الصيام. Allah سبحانه وتعالى is showing us the connection that Ramadan has with the Quran. And this is the month of Ramadan, إخواني في الله. It is the month of the Quran. It is the month where all of us we need to go back to the book of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. In fact, the ulama, many of the ulama would narrate that when the month of Ramadan came, they would leave all the other books and only focus on the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a month, dear brothers in Islam, where we need to revise and go back to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we do not know how to read the Qur'an, then it is a month where we try our best to learn the Qur'an. It is a month where we go back and if we cannot read the Qur'an, then let us try to listen as much as we can to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dear brothers in Islam, it is a month, as I said, where the Qur'an was revealed. It is a month where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us, It is a guidance for all of mankind, 
وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر so whoever of you is present يعني not a traveler and you cite the month of Ramadan the crescent of the month of Ramadan Hilal Ramadan is being cited and we are present then upon us the brothers in Islam is to fast this great month it is a month as I said إخواني في الله for those who are seeking to get close to Allah Azawajal, this is your month. Those of you, the brothers in Islam, who are looking to increase your Iman, those of you who are looking for the doors of Khair, then this is the month. This is the month, the brothers in Islam. Your opportunity has come. This is the month that we can get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and increase our Iman ten times. The brothers in Islam increase our iman, multiplied many, many times. The brothers in Islam, it is a month full of forgiveness and mercy, as I said. An Abi Hurairah radiyallahu anhu, an Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam قال من صام رمضان إيمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه. In the authentic hadith, Abu Hurairah radiyallahu anhu he says that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, whosoever fasts the month of Ramadan with these two conditions. Iman, he fasts the month of Ramadan believing it's wajib, believing it's an obligation and expecting the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Iman al wahtisaba ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhanbi. His past sins will be forgiven. وقال النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام إذا جاء رمضان فتحت أبواب الجنة وغلقت أبواب النار وصفدت الشياطين. In the authentic hadith Abu Hurairah رضي الله عنه again he narrates that Rasulullah عليه الصلاة والسلام he said from the very first day that Ramadan arrives فتحت أبواب الجنة. The brothers in Islam emphasize or here we find the emphasis Rasulullah عليه الصلاة والسلام didn't just say فتحت didn't just say the doors of Jannah are open. But rather, he emphasized it with the shadda, futihat, emphasizing that all the gates of paradise are open from the very moment that Ramadan arrives. From the very first moment Ramadan arrives, all the gates of Jannah are open due to the amount of khayr that the believers are engaged in, due to the amount of good deeds that the believers are busy in doing, due to the intentions, the brothers in Islam, that the believers are intending. وَغُلِّقَتْ أَبْوَابُ النَّارِ And all of the gates of the hellfire are slammed shut. Not only this as an aid and help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, صُفِّدَةُ الشَّيَاطِينَ All the devils have been chained up. Have been chained up. Not only this, إخواني في الله. Again, in another hadith, we find Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam, he tells us, وَلِلَّهِ عُتَقَاءُ مِنَ النَّارِ وَذَلِكَ كُلُّ لَيْلَةً And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He frees a people from the hellfire وَذَلِكَ كُلُّ لَيْلَةً And that is each and every night. In Ramadan, the brothers in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in each and every night, He frees a group of people from the hellfire. It is a month, wallahi, ikhwani, for Allah, that we need to work hard to be from those who earn paradise, to be from those who are freed from the hellfire, to be from those whose past sins have been forgiven due to fasting the month of Ramadan. The brothers in Islam, this is how Rasulullah he would remind the Sahaba. This is how the Prophet he would give that encouragement to the companions upon the approach of Ramadan. Give him that, yani, that anticipation and that longing for the month of Ramadan. And this is how our hearts should be. This is how our intentions should be. We should have that anticipation, expecting and longing and waiting for Ramadan to, to come. Looking forward to Ramadan to be upon us, the brothers in Islam. To be, يعني, to be from those who are earning the mercy and the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, this is from our Iman. We learn in Surah Al-Hajj, يَقُولُ رَبُّ عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَمَنْ يُعَظِّمْ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهَا مِنْ تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ And whosoever magnifies, in other words, the brothers in Islam, whosoever makes a big deal 
of the signs and the symbols of Allah Azza wa Jal, and no doubt Ramadan is from these signs, then indeed this is from the taqwa of the hearts. This is from your iman. Therefore, ikhwani fillah, have that longing and have that anticipation for the coming of Ramadan. Have that niyyah that you are waiting for Ramadan in order to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In order to earn paradise. In order to be from al-muttaqeen. Having this or having said this, the brothers in Islam, there are some things that we can do now instead of waiting for Ramadan to be upon us. For we find many, many, what they do is they say, Khayr, at the moment I'll relax and I'll take it easy and maybe I'll make sure I eat as much as I can and drink as much as I can and rest as much as I can. In fact, by doing this, you are only harming yourself. But we find this, subhanAllah, it's become a habit for many. Just before Ramadan, they believe this is a way to prepare for Ramadan. By eating as much as we can and yani, kicking back. and In fact, this is not the things that we... This is, will only harm us, dear brothers in Islam. This will only make the coming of Ramadan even harder upon us. It will make it yani, even more difficult for us when the month of Ramadan arrives. But rather, dear brothers in Islam, there are some great steps that we can take, wallahi, from not only tonight, but from this very moment. From these steps and from the greatest of these steps, no doubt, is at tawbah Repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Turning back to Allah azza wa jal. And starting again with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a brand new page, dear brothers in Islam. Starting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a clean slate. Yani imagine meeting the month of Ramadan and you are more than ready. You have already turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive all of your sins. And this is something, ikhwani fillah, it is from the sunnah as we will see. It is something which is required from us, not only just before Ramadan, but each and every day. Each and every day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us in Surah An-Nur, وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ And turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In repentance, all of you, O believers, in order that you may be successful. جَمِيعًا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Akhwani fillah, don't ever lose hope in the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. Don't ever despair in the forgiveness of Allah Azza wa Jal. This is only from the tricks of shaitan. This is only from one of the ways of shaitan that he gives you that waswas in that you have seen too much. And a person, he becomes bored with seeking istighfar from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, Allah Azza wa Jal, he never becomes bored or tired from forgiving you, dear brothers in Islam, but rather it is the abd, the slave, who becomes bored and tired from asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. It is something, dear brothers in Islam, which, as I said, we need to start <coughs> from today. At tawbah very simply, the ulama, they mention some conditions for at tawbah for repentance, and that is very simply, leaving off the sin. Tarkul ma'asiyah. Wal nadam. Al nadam huwa ruknul a'adham fi tawbah Not only leaving the sin, not only stopping the sin, but also having remorse and regret for that sin. Likewise, from the conditions of at tawbah is to have a niyyah, that you will not return back to that sin. This is yani, very simply, there are other, another condition. However, very simply, these are the three conditions that the scholars mentioned for at tawbah repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is something we learn, as I said, from the sunnah, from the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, the authentic hadith, Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma, he said, كُنَّ نَعُدُّ لِرَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم فِي الْمَجْلِسِ مِئَةَ مَرَّةً يَقُولْ رَبِّ اغْفِرْ لِي وَتُبْ عَلَيَّ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ Amazing hadith. Akhwani fillah, listen to this description of Rasulullah alayhi sallam. Abdullah ibn Umar, who was one of the companions who, would, who was known for his يعني, performing of the sunnah. In fact, he would watch Rasulullah alayhi sallatu wasallam very closely in all of his deeds in order to try and imitate him. That was Abdullah ibn Umar. He said, we used to count him in one sitting, saying 100 times, رَبِّ اغْفِرْ لِي وَتُبْ عَلَيَّ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ Very simple sentence. But how many of us, dear brothers in Islam, how many of us have this on our tongues? How many of us have said this today? How many of us, wallahi, ask yourselves, how many of us have sat and asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for at tawbah 
or very simply saying, Allahumma ghfirli, awa astaghfirullah. Allahumma ghfirli wa atubu, wa atubu ilayk. This is something Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam, and he is who he is. He is the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, asking Allah azza wa jal in one sitting, Rabbi ghfirli wa atubu alayya. Then what about us? What about us, akhwani fillah? Try, try and make this a habit. Not only tonight, but try and make it a habit. Something would you are walking to the masjid, or you are yani, at work, or you're driving in your car, or you're on the train, or on the bus. Make it a habit of saying this statement. Rabbi ghfirli wa tub alayya. Oh Allah, I seek your forgiveness and accept my repentance. Inna ka anta tawwab rahim You are the one who constantly accepts the repentance and the all-merciful. The brothers in Islam, from the great steps that we can take likewise, to prepare ourselves for the month of Ramadan is al-ilm, is to seek knowledge. What I mean by this more specifically is to learn the rulings relating to as Learn the rules relating to fasting. For it is something we are about to, or an action which we are about to engage in day in and day out. Learn the, the ahkam, learn the rulings related to, to fasting. What breaks the fast? What makes the fast correct? What yani, perfects the fast? Learn likewise the rules relating to a dua, for we will be engaged in a lot of dua. Learn what is the sunnah when making dua. How can we follow the sunnah closely when asking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Revise the ahkam, the rules of al wudu. Go back and revise the rulings of a salah. These are things, wallahi, will only yani, increase your iman and making sure that your deeds are accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From the steps likewise that we can take to prepare ourselves for Ramadan is to have a يعني, al-azm or al-azim al-qawiyya the brothers in Islam. In other words, the brothers in Islam, put yourself or put for yourselves a plan. Put a plan in place for the month of Ramadan. Have a program, the brothers in Islam. يعني, have a program. There is no harm in saying to yourself, this is what I will do for the first 10 days in Ramadan. And if you can go even further and plan your, the whole month, then why not? The brothers in Islam, don't just waste the month away. Don't let the month of Ramadan fall upon you and say, Khayn, it's, it's enough for me, I'll just يعني, fast and inshallah, and I'll try my best to just pray. And that's enough, bi'ithnillah. No, ikhwani fillah. Aim high, dear brothers in Islam. Put that plan in place from now. Put that plan in place before the month of Ramadan about how you would get close to Allah Azza wa Put a plan for Jannah, as I like to say. Plan for how will you reach paradise? How will you attain at taqwa how will you improve upon the previous Ramadan? This is from the great steps that we can take to prepare ourselves for the month of Ramadan. Uh, lastly, the brothers in Islam, and Wallahi, there are so many things that we can do, but these are from the steps that I wanted to get, things that we can do from today. Lastly, Akhwani Fillah, as I have said before, listen to how and take note to how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the days and nights of Ramadan. For indeed, He said, Ayyama ma'adudat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He described the days and nights of Ramadan, He said, Ayyam, the brothers in Islam, it is but a limited number of days. A very short time. Days which you can count. Ma'adudat. Days which pass by so quickly. And all of us, wallahi, we have experienced this. Many of us have experienced this. When Ramadan starts, we find we are already day five. Day 10, halfway, and then the last 10 are upon us. The last 10 nights are upon us. Very, very quickly, dear brothers in Islam. Therefore, Akhwani Fallah, remind yourselves of this from day one. Ayyama ma'adudat. If you want for yourself, put a reminder on your phone. Put a reminder at home, or at your work, on your desktop. Ayyama ma'adudat. You will find yourselves, Wallahi, not counting يعني, how many days left. One day has gone. Wallah, we have 28 left. 27. 26, making it heavy and hard upon yourselves. But rather you will say to yourselves, SubhanAllah, one day has gone. We've missed it. It's finished. We can never get it back. And we only have 27 or 28 left to earn that Jannah, to earn that Taqwa. Hey, let's go. Let's roll up our sleeves and work for a Jannah. For this way, dear brothers in Islam, you will not waste time. <coughs> this way, it will lead you to making the most out of the days in Ramadan and nights of the month of Ramadan. 
also and lastly ikhwani fillah do not make the days and nights of ramadan just like ordinary days treat them as special dear brothers in islam give them that that speciality they deserve don't just make them on ordinary days as you do in every other day try and do something special in that day whether it's extra quran whether it's an, a special dua whether it's something that you learn extra whether it's more dhikr whether it's يعني, you pondering and thinking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala try and make these days and nights that extra special يعني, differentiate them from our ordinary days and nights هذا والله أعلم وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد أخواني في الله before we begin with any any questions I'd like to ask a question يعني, before you have the chance I'd like to throw this one out yeah, who can and I prefer for especially one of the young boys if they can answer who can remind us of, of some of the steps that I mentioned in, in, in fact I mentioned only four steps for so who can remind us of what are some things we can do to prepare ourselves for the month of Ramadan but just to check Yanni I know it's a work day and many of us are tired and uh, no doubt long hours and طبعاً, the mind is ready to shut down especially after Aisha but I don't blame you I don't blame you for I'm 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 with you on that point but who can quickly remind us of what are what are the four steps even one one of the steps now I said follow the first step is the repentance at-tawbah first and foremost ikhwani fil lah at-tawbah don't forget at-tawbah repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from all of our sins asking Allah azza wa jalla to forgive our sins now that's um, one is special extra praise it could be uh, reading Quran or prayer. طيب. Okay. Okay. We said more knowledge, gaining more knowledge. Al-ilm. Nah, nah. Maybe the brother, what he's referring to, maybe if if by putting a plan, putting a plan, so we're or by differentiating the days and nights of Ramadan to the other days by doing more salah. Jazakallah khairah. Now, having ilm or seeking knowledge, especially about what we are about to do, about the fast. And all those matters relating to fasting, for a suhoor, breaking fast. How? What are the things which break our fast? What are the etiquettes of fasting? Uh, how to perfect our fast? Uh, well done, Jazakallah khairan. Now, the young boy in the red, now, Jazakallah, I always love to see when the young, mashallah, uh, for these are our future. Wallahi, these could be our future mashayikh, inshallah ta'ala. Ask forgiveness. Asking tayyib, that's, that's been said. Good one. But a good reminder, Jazakallah khairan. Now, al azima Oh, he said putting a plan. Is that what you're saying? Al sabar Okay, good. So, so being being patient. So putting a plan in place. Okay, aiming as we said, aiming high for the month of Ramadan. Putting a plan, putting a program, and being patient. The brothers Islam. Extra sabr, no doubt. Shahr Ramadan, shahr al sabr. It is a month of al sabr. Now, last, what, what was the last step I mentioned? It was the very last thing. Ayyaman <laughs> ma'dudat. Huh? Two words. Ayyam ma'dudat. Days which are limited in number. SubhanAllah. It says Allah Azawajal is trying to remind us, Ikhwani Fillah. These days are days which are very special. Huh? Come and get them. Come and get them. Just like when Harvey Norman has that big sale. Huh? We all know about it. Tabarakallah. For telling you they are limited, huh? Very, very quick. Yani very, these days are gonna, it's a run out. Come and get it. If you want to grab a bargain, Ramadan is this your opportunity. This is your golden opportunity, Ikhwani Fillah. Don't waste it. Don't waste it. Make the most of it. Enjoy it, Ikhwani Fillah. And get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is, as I said, the month of Al Khair, the month of Barakat, the month of, of Sabr, the month of Rahmah and mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, Akhwani Fillah, I think I've said enough. But forgive me if I have any taken too much of your time. Um, it looks like there is no questions. We'll wrap it up. Yeah.